blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Since 1987 March, the gospel of Jesus Christ 
in the whole planet Earth has faced such a tribulation and trial that the church has never had in 50 years. The challenge has so come to ministers and ministries that almost the saints were to deny that Jesus is King of King and Lord of Lord. Through the stories that the newspaper carried, two Ted couple, two NBC, CNN, NBC, CBS, men like him and me and few others that go around the world has been asked, is God still there? Or he bowed out. Particularly if you are from America. The stories that the media distributed around the whole world almost made people say, if this is all that is in Christianity, that's enough. But you know in the face of it all, more people are coming to the king today than ever before in history. Because salvation is not in any other name than the name of Jesus. Some people have slacked in tight pain because of what the media said. Some slack in offering giving in project supporting because of what the media said in North Carolina, in Baton Rouge, and different places. And I began to ask myself, was there ever a time in the Bible that the church passed through such a detaining, disgraceful, shameful time in the scripture? When I read through the Bible, over 200 times, over 200 places, I discovered that Almost, you would have thought the devil is now in charge. But suddenly, God will come down and say, I'm still here. I've not changed. Man may change. Government may change. People may change. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I began to sum up courage when Pastor Benny Hinn invited me here. You know, the hardest place to preach is where the pastor is a preacher. If you are going to a church where the pastor makes noise, it's not hard. If you are going to a place where the pastor tells stories, it's not hard. But where you go to, when you go to a place where the pastor is a preacher, you have to ask God for a scripture. And that's what I did. And I'm glad I'm here. So you sit down and let me preach. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In the gospel of the book of Kings, and I want you to look at it tonight. Second Kings, chapter 2. A prophet lived in Israel. He just graduated from a Bible school where his boss went to heaven in wild wind of fire. He saw this prophet honor God with the words of his mouth. He saw this prophet do great and mighty things. And this prophet said, before I leave, I teach you how to live in a society that denies the power of God. 
And he said, one of the things I'm going to teach you is how not to humiliate yourself in the hand of the devil. Is how not to allow yourself to be used by the devil as a vacuum to sweep the floor. Is how not to accept any suggestion of destruction that the devil put in your life. This prophet began to teach the young prophet. It was not the Bible school of the prophet, but the Bible school of God's power in the now. I hear people say they are students of the school of prophet. It's not in the Bible. I'm telling you, it's not there. To go to school to learn how to prophesy, it's not in the Bible. You can prophesy without going to Bible school. Can you say amen? amen? You say, what do you mean? I mean that you can prophesy without going to Bible school. If you know Jesus, you receive the gift of prophecy, you prophesy. Have I offended you? All right. So this prophet began to say, follow me and watch how I'm going to end my career. The king of the land didn't want to hear anything about the church. He was tired of the power that made heaven and earth. So he said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to send my soldiers. They are going to capture the man of God. They are going to kill him. And that will be the end of the power of the gospel in that land. And he sent... I will show the whole world that tithe and offering is wasteful exercise. While he was discussing that in his house, the Spirit of God told the man of God that 50 men were coming to tie him, take him to the king, and they'll bring him before the open market and say, where is your God? And this man of God who was not very humble like some preachers of today. Who was not ready to be allowed, to allow God to use him for a disgraceful exercise. Prepared. And in Second King chapter 1, verse 10, we are told, and Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, let fire Come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down, and there came down, and there came down, and there came down, came down. fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Get up and shout hallelujah if you believe in the Bible. I say if you believe in the Bible, stand to your feet and shout hallelujah. If you believe that this is the word of God, shout hallelujah. Pastor him, there's time to accept the insult. There is time when you don't know God, people say, your God is dead. If you don't know God, people can make jest of your God. Elijah said, not me. He said, God, if you are still there, and if I'm your man, and if you are my God, Show it. Show it. Now, send fire from heaven.
consume the enemy of the gospel. Everybody shout hallelujah. He didn't say, if I sing in the choir. He didn't say, if I play the trumpet. He didn't say, if I'm a preacher. He didn't say, if I pay tight. He didn't say, if I go to Tulsa. He didn't say, if I go to Dallas. He didn't say, if I'm a Sunday school teacher. He didn't say, if I speak in tongues. He did say, if I'm a good storyteller, he said, if I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, if I be a woman of God, if God is still alive, send down fire from heaven, that they may know you are my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. He didn't say, if I go to church. He didn't say, if I know how to play organ. He said, if truly I'm a man of God, let it be known. Let it be known that I'm truly a man. I am a man of God. That is lacking in the church today. Let me tell you this. At the age of 24, as a young preacher, I was at the church. I was an evangelist. I was press ambassador director. And my pastor stood up one day, Benny. And he said, Jesus said. Everybody said, Jesus said. Jesus said. Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Heal, the Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. I said, who said? Jesus. 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 To whom? Jesus. To the church. I went to my pastor. I said, Pastor, did you say Jesus said? I can cast out devils. He said, yes. Everybody said, yes. yes. Can I heal the sick? Yes. Can I cleanse the lepers? Yes. Can I raise the dead? Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Church. Cast out devil. Shout. Heal the sick. Church, clean the lepers. Yes. Church, raise the dead. Yes. I said, Pastor, that's good for me. I said, Have you done it? He said, No. I said, Can I do it? He said, What? Yes. What? Yes. Can I do it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Do you want to do it? Yes. I said, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I took my bicycle. That was my Rolls Royce. That was my 747. That was my DC-10. I took my bicycle and I took my Bible. And I went from street to street. Is anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? Oh my God. Anyone died here? And somebody said, what are you looking for the dead for? Ask me. Ask 
me. Ask me. Be bold. My pastor told me to raise them up. In my city. Not in Jerusalem. Not in Orlando. My own city. From house to house. Is anybody dead? They said no. Is anybody dead? No. From 11 o'clock in the morning. Half past four in the afternoon. I got to a house where somebody finally died. Everybody say hallelujah. I said, do you have anybody dead? They say, here is one. They say, what do you want to do with him or her? I said, I've come to raise the dead from the dead. They say, here you are with one. I said, glory to God. Everybody said, glory to God. I took the child, three years old. And I carried this child. And I looked at the child. I didn't know left from right. I've never done it before. And my pastor said he has not done it, but I can do it. That's difficult if he has not done it. And he said, I can do it. So I said, baby, be healed. No answer. Baby, oh God, be healed. He died the more. I said, my pastor said, I can raise you. I cried, no answer. I wept, no answer. So I turned to the Bible where he read. You shall cast out devil. You shall heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Then I put the baby down and found where Jesus raised the dead. And I saw where he said. The Bible said, he drove all of them out. So I said, fine. Father, mother, friends, all of you out. <laughs> Benny hands. And they all left the house. And they said, what do you want to do? I said, Jesus drove them out. I should drive you out. And I drove them out, and they stood at the corridor, and I read, he said unto her, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. So I called them back, I said, what's the name of your child? The girl in the Bible is Damsel. What's your child's name? <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. I didn't know left from right, but I went to raise the dead. Shout hallelujah. And they said, the name of the girl is Inuata. So I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up right now in Jesus' name. And in five seconds, Everybody say five seconds. Five the girl sneezed. She sneezed and rose up. Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! I say hallelujah! I didn't have. Doctor of Divinity. I didn't have certificate from Bible school. I was not a professor from Zoe Bible College. I was a novice who wanted to try it. And it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. Jesus has not changed. The power of God has not changed. Salvation has not changed. 
the blood of Jesus, God's own son, is still available for miracles. Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! She got up. Now I began to dance with a dead baby. And I said, let me read the Bible again. She said, he said to them, give her food. And I said, bring food. And she ate. And, and he gave her to the mother. And I took the baby. And I gave to the mother. I said, I'm going to look for another one. I went around the whole town. I didn't find any. The next week, none. Three weeks time, eight years old boy died. But did it on a girl. Male and female created he them. And I took the boy, eight years old. They said he died yesterday evening. And they are looking for casket for him this morning. I said, you don't need to worry. I'm here. I'm here. Everybody say, I'm here. I'm here. Say, I'm here. I'm here. That's why you are born again. Yeah. To save the lost. To heal the sick. Yeah. To raise the dead. Yeah. To cleanse the lepers. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You thought you were saved so you can check in the church. You told you we are born again so you can speak in tongue and turn around seven times? <laughs> Salvation is more than falling and rising. Amen. Salvation is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that boy got up after my prayer. And in a few days, my gate is full. Of all the sick in my town, all the blind in my city, all the deaf in my city, all the dumb in my city. I tried it by mistake, and it happened by mistake. Yes, and since that time, over eight people have seen God raised from the dead. <laughs> you say! You have the gift of raising the dead. No. If I have the gift of raising the dead, I put a big sign in my door. Come unto me, all ye that are dead, and I shall raise you up. <laughs> That's not my calling. And the greatest time in my life is when I stand before half a million people, one million people, 100,000 people, and proclaim, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, Forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Elijah said, If I be, he didn't say if you think I am. He didn't say if you wish I am. He didn't say if I think I am. He said, If I am, if I be a man of God, shame. Demons, bow. Sickness, bow. Diseases, bow. Fear, bow. And fire, come down. And fire came down from heaven. He said, if are you a man of God? Yes. Are you a man of God? Yes. When was the last time you cast out them? Are you a woman of God? Yes. When was the last time you said, don't bury that person, give me? When was the last time you said, give me the casket for offering? I want to sell it to pay tithe, but I give you your dead child. It's time for the church to show the world there is power 
in Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The next verse. The next verse. Verse 11. Again. Everybody say again. again. I didn't hear you. Again. One more time. Again. again. Also. You thought temptation is once. And some of you think the devil has gone on vacation. He's at home. He hasn't gone on vacation. He's still alive. You still see thunder every day. You still see earthquake every day. You see you still plane crash every day. You see the Iran and Iraq fighting. You see the Arab war hijacking Arab people. You see the people that are hijacking aircraft. You see people that are killing one another. You see people that are murdering each other. You still see rape in town. That is not the work of God. It is the work of the devil. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life. And have it more in abundance. After the death. Of 50 men by fire. The Bible said, Pastor Him, again. I thought that would have taught the devil's children lesson. But they don't learn until you teach them again and again and again and again. If the devil comes to your house seven times a day, cast him out ten times. How many will say hallelujah? hallelujah. No time for negotiation. Don't say, devil, do you want to go? No, tell him to go. Tell him to go. Tell him to go. From your business, go. From your marriage, go. From your children, go. From your finances, go. Devil, go. let the devil take your job and you begin to sing. The Lord gave, the Lord took. The Lord never gave and takes. It is the devil that steals your money. It is the devil that steals your children. It is the devil that steals your job. It is the devil that steals your joy. The best thing you need to do is to bind him and command him to leave. In the name above all other names, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shout hallelujah. Again. Also. Verse 11. Shall we read it together? Are you there? Open your Bible. Look at it. One, two, go. And again. Verse 12. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Brother, did you hear me? If I be me, everybody say me, me. be me. Man. Man. man, man, woman, woman. Of, God. of God, think about it. You know how many things you've lost because you never reminded yourself. Because you failed to remind yourself. The Spirit of Jesus is in me. 
Romans 8 says, If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, your mortal body shall be quickened by the Holy Spirit. Elijah said, Father, let them know in Orlando I am a man of God. And I can see God say, Son, that's good. Everybody say, Son, that's good. I can picture up God from heaven smiling and saying, Elijah, you sure know you're right. You surely know what to do. You don't need to wait till terminal time before you ask for a doctor. When your case becomes incurable, you die if you don't know you're right. But if you can bind headache, you can bind cancer. If you can bind fever, you can bind ulcer. If you can lose the mentally derided man, you can raise the dead. How many will say amen? amen? No time to negotiate with the devil. Elijah didn't say, excuse me. Let me see who can bail me. Let me see who can help me. He said, if I be if I be a man of God, let fire from heaven come down here. Can you talk like that? What would have you done if, if 50 men came to your house in Orlando and you know they came to kill you? You know what some of you would have done? <laughs> Pastor Benny help. When was the last time you reacted to the attack of the enemy? When was the last time you rebelled against people? When was the last time you said, Headache, if I be a man of God, leave me. Poverty, if I be a man of God, out and prosperity in. If I be a man of God, that's what I'm here for tonight. To get the men and women of God who want to do miracle in the name of God. Amen. Jesus hasn't changed. Jimmy Swaggart may make mistake. Jim Baker may make mistake. Anybody can make mistake. Jesus has not made mistakes. Amen. He's alive. He's alive! Three years ago, Pastor Him, all the witches in the world met in Chicago to hold their first conference in Africa. You know where they want to hold it? My city. my city and their chief host granted the network interview and he said the first universal conference of witches and wizards is going to hold in Benin and I said what? where? they said where I live so I said it's not true everybody says it's not true I didn't hear you. One more time. And the press said, what is not true? I said, they can't come. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to kill all of them. <laughs> I 
And they called the chief host and said, Dr. Inahosa said, you can't hold the meeting. He said, not even God can stop it. I will bring you the newspaper. He said, not even God can stop it. And the press said, listen to what this man said. He said, not even God. I said, he's correct. They said, he's correct. I said, yes. They said, why? I said, because God shouldn't waste his time. I'm here. one to me. <laughs> I can handle this. And I said, how many are there? I said, 9,800. So I said, good. Everybody said, good. good. I love challenges. <laughs> because challenges are scaffolding to higher height in faith. There's time for people to find out who you are in Orlando. It's time for people to know that God put you here in Orlando. If they cannot tell by your clapping, by your dancing, they can tell by your fire. Did you hear me? If they don't know who you are because you sing in the choir, because you pay your tithe, they can know who you are when you raise the dead. Everybody say, fire come, down. fire, come down. Say, fire, come down. Fire, come down. And the media men came to my house. They said, Dr. Idahosa, you are taking a risk. I said, what? They said, be careful. I said, People who take care don't take charge. And people who take charge don't take care. For my Bible says, be careful for nothing. <laughs> but by prayers and supplication, make your request known to God. And they said, are you ready to face the camera to tell the whole nation what you are saying? And which I call this man? I said, call two of us. They brought him to the studio and they brought me to the studio. And the anchor man said, Gentlemen, I don't want anyone to die among you. <laughs> Chief host, are you really sure you are bringing 9,800 witches from all over the world? He said, Yes. Dr. Idahusa, are you sure you are going to stop the meeting? I said, I'm not going to stop it. I've stopped it. I have stopped it. He said, are you ready? We want to grant you one hour to tell us how strong your God is and you tell us how your witchcraft is. He said, I'm ready. And I said, fine. But at the end of this program, you let me pray because I'm going to kill him. They brought us to the camera and they asked him, <laughs> I said, they asked him, tell us how strong witches are. And he told us, for 27 minutes, he quoted from the Old Testament, from six or seven book of Moses, from Egyptian books, from Israeli book, from British book, from magical book. And they said to me, did you hear him? I said, yes. They said, what do you say? I said, I have nothing to say. The meeting is canceled. <laughs> they said, why? And I opened my Bible. No divination spirit. No incantation spirit. 
shall stand the presence of the righteous. And I began to quote from Leviticus to the New Testament. And at the end, I said, how many minutes more? They said five. I said, it's time for me to kill this man. I said, sir, just answer me one word, and I kill him. And everybody began to panic. I said, say yes or no. Are you a witch? He said, no. I said, get up. <laughs> if you say yes, I kill you. But if you are not. And he said, I'm not. I stood up in the studio, network news, Tobomo Hikoro Lobomo Jabala And I said, if you had accepted you will, I kill you. The next morning he came to my office to collect a Bible. And they still met him. The media left us and they still went to his house. With the meeting hall, yes. Seven days more. Three days more with the meeting hall, yes. And they came to me. Are you sure the meeting is canceled? I said, no comment. If the meeting hall, I set fire in my Bible. It's canceled. What I bind on earth is burned in heaven. <laughs> and they said, what is your power? I said, my power is in the Bible. Whatsoever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And they said, but two days more. I said, don't waste your time. The next morning, I went to the president's office. And I said, I've told the whole nation, and you are aware, that there's no meeting of the witches and wizards. He said, the day you will be on TV, I sent telex to all the embassies in the world not to allow one wizard to come to Nigeria. <laughs> today, today, the constitution of Nigeria is the only constitution I know in the whole world where it is written, no man should practice witchcraft. Because of what I said, they put it in the constitution. You cannot practice witchcraft in Nigeria. What you bind on earth can be bound in heaven. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. It's time for the church to know whom they are. Say, I'm a man of God. Amen. Say, I'm a, man of God. I'm a man of God. If you're a woman, say, you're a woman of God. Woman of God. Are you there? If you know your right in Christ, every demon in Orlando will be afraid of you. Nineteen eighty five, the government of Nigeria announced no more tracks, no more crusade, no more open air in the whole nation. And I went to my room and knelt down. Father, what did you say? And God said, What do you say? I said, Father, what do you say? And he said, Son, what do you say? He said, what do you want? I said, I want the whole crusade. He said, you can go ahead. I said, I can go ahead. He said, yes. And I sent for Bunky. <laughs> I said, Reha Bunky, I have two big crusades. Can you join me? He agreed to come. 
in April 1985, March 1985, for the first time in my friend's life, he saw half a million people face to face for five nights in Ibadan when the government said no more crusade. Wow. In the whole city of Ibadan, on Friday, all the mosques closed to come to my crusade. Then I said, thank you, Lord. Everybody said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he said, son, where do you want to go next? I said, Washington of Nigeria, Lagos. And he said, you can do it. And I printed one and a half million handbills and 50,000 posters and hired 2,000 ushers to distribute it around the whole city of Lagos. And that's the first time I saw with my two eyes one million people every night in a crusade. When the government said no more, and God said go ahead. <laughs> if I be a man of God, let fire come down. The devil has made fun enough of your business. Stand up tomorrow and say, business, I change you. <laughs> Look at your bank passbook and say, this red is not good. Be green in Jesus' name. <laughs> Look at your marriage that the devil is fighting. I say, you demon of confusion in marriage. Get out. If I be a woman of God, Satan, leave my husband from drinking. I lose him from drinking. I lose him from smoking. I lose him from the works of the enemy. When I became a Christian, Pastor Him, my mother had eight of us, only me, a Christian. And I said, God, what do I do? He says, Son, what do you want to do? That's the problem I have with God. Every time I ask him questions, he asks me back. <laughs> he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want my sisters, four, to be saved. I want my brothers, three plus me, saved. He said, you can have them. So I began to call them name one by one. And today, all of them are in the same ministry with me. <laughs> if I be a man of God. Let fire. Not snow. Not ice blocks. Not diet Pepsi. Not diet Coke. Let fire. Everybody say fire. fire. The world needs to see fire. Before they know. You serve a risen Christ. Are you ready? The next verse. Verse 13. Shall we read it together? Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand to our feet. I say, let's stand to our feet. Oh, <laughs> Hmm. And he sent again. Everybody say again. Amen. Aren't you surprised, Pastor Benny Hens, that devil is not tired of attacking? You know, some of you think when you speak in tongue, then the devil take his baggage and leave. No. You continue to bind him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Until God sent him to the bottom pit. Yes, right. How many will say amen to that? Yes. You can't stop the devil from doing his job. His job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he shouldn't stop you from doing your job. Your job is to bind and to lose. Can you say amen? amen. That's all. He knows his job. Your job is to cast him out. 
His job is to try to destroy you. Your job is to destroy him. Hasn't the Bible said it is better to give than to receive? Cast him out. <laughs> Verse 13. <laughs> and he sent again a captain of the third fifty. For oh, one man. One man. Listen. And the third captain of fifty went up. And came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O oh man, everybody read it. Oh man. Let me hear you loud. Oh man, Again. Oh man, oh man of God. What did Elijah say he is? Man. What did the devil's children say he is? A man of God. Spare me and my men. It's time for devil's children to kneel before you. And look at your face as, Oh man of God! Oh man of God! Oh man of God! Oh man, oh woman of God! You've tolerated nonsense enough. It's time for you to rebel against sickness. It's time for you to say no to poverty. It's time for you to say no to cancer. It's time for you to say no to diseases. It's time for you to say no to shortages. I said, devil, if I be a man of God, leave me alone. How many want the power of God tonight? Raise your hand and begin to worship him right now. devil's children to kneel before you. What you find on earth can be found in heaven. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. Oh my God! Everybody shout hallelujah! How Bishop be he the host of Man of Faith.
we have, there's a day for it to stop. How many can say amen to that? If God tells you to do the impossible, don't look for who have not done it. Somebody say, I hear you. I don't care how many years you carry reproach. There's a day God takes the reproach away. Somebody say, Amen. For Elizabeth, if you want to be inspired, don't look for who has inspired. Many of us have friends that are tear bearers. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. You don't need who will weigh you down. You need who will lift you up. Somebody say hallelujah. You don't need someone that is annoyed of what God is doing with you. You need someone who will rejoice in your miracle. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Dr. Swether, for your kindness to bring me here this morning. I bring you all greetings from Africa. I thank God for what he's doing over there. Yes, sir. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1 is where my text is coming from. Luke chapter 1. About 18 years ago, I came across this scripture, not because it had not been in the Bible, but because I didn't see it as something that was different from Christmas message. But I saw it in a way that God made it known to me that for every trial we have, there's a day for it to stop. How many can say amen to that? I read this scripture and it touched my life. And I'm grateful to God that I have preached it to countless millions in all over the world. But look at this verse here. Verse 24 of Luke chapter 1. The Bible says, and after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and he hid herself five months, saying, Thus had the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Oh, say to your neighbor, your reproach is gone. Please, help me say it loud. Your reproach is gone. So many times when we face tribulations and trials and life of torture, especially when we are serving God. You know, you wouldn't believe this, sir. For 38 years and 3 months I've been preaching now. But I never knew a Christian as a young man can face trial. I never knew you can be in the house of God and face tribulation. I never knew that Christians can fight one another or betray one another or even try to kill one another. Before I began to read the Bible that Lucifer was not from Tampa. <laughs> Lucifer was in heaven. And the second in, com uh, in command after Father, Son and Holy Ghost Lucifer was second in command because he was the archangel of worship. But the Bible says, and that this is what helped me most, and there was war in heaven. I said, oh my God, if there's war in my church, no problem. If there's war in heaven, there's war in my city, there was war in heaven. But coming back to the story I have just read, it took several years for this woman of God and her husband 
to get their need met. And she uttered the words of prophecy, which I want you to retain in your mind. God has dealt kindly with me. Say that everybody. Please talk to me. I'm not a visitor here. I'm just preaching for the first time. Say, God has dealt with me kindly. Now, now add the second word. He's taking away my reproach. Now say the two words together. God has dealt with me kindly. He's taking away my reproach. How many of you want any kind of reproach in your life to go away? Say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, for Elizabeth to say that, that today, March the 2nd, you can time the day your change takes place. You can time the day the difference came to your life. You can carry a load for a long time in your life, but a day can come when you can say like today, Elizabeth is saying, this day, say that with me, the Lord has taken away my reproach among men. That's good for you, brother. It doesn't matter how many laugh at you before. It doesn't matter how many say, who are you before? God says from today, your reproach is gone. Somebody say amen. amen. I thank God for that. Now, you know, to have a reproach may not be by your own approach. It could be what the enemy imposed upon you. Sometimes, people ask me, Hidahosa, why do good things, bad things happen to good people? I say because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. May I repeat? Why does bad things happen to good people? Because when bad, ask me why. Point to your hand, say why. I didn't hear you. Be bold, don't be afraid. Why what? Why do bad things happen to good people? So ask me a question loud. Because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. Do you understand that? When something bad happens to a bad man, there's no difference. But when something bad happens to a good person, everybody knows. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh yes. If you build this church, the world may not know too much. But you, if, you, if the pastor who built this church is not known all over America, but if this pastor were to steal a bicycle, everybody will know. You understand what I'm saying? Satan doesn't advertise good things because that's not his job. Oh God, I, am I offending you? The devil does not advertise good things. That's not his job. His job is to kill, to destroy. But the good thing is, we saints should have to advertise what is good. You didn't hear that. The devil doesn't talk good of good people. But good people should talk good of what is good. Somebody say amen. All right, let me go straight to the Bible so that you don't miss, make mistakes. Look at verse 26. And in this, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Uh, now, listen to this. God sent angel to Mary. How many of you are tired of seeing devil? Aren't you tired of seeing visitor call Satan, Satan, Satan? 
I think once in a while we all need to see Angel Gabriel. I'd like to hear you say Amen. Listen to what this angel said to Mary. Verse 28 says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hey! Uh huh. Hey! Say that, everybody. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Somebody say, Amen. Uh, I, I look forward to the day I will hear the church being told, Hey! Instead of, Ooh! Hell is better than shame. Mary, hey, you are highly favored. You are blessed among women. Somebody say amen. Now listen to the scripture carefully. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Say, that's good for me. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I, I'm not going to say too many things this morning, but I love the visitation of angel. I love the word, the word, you are highly favored. I love the word, God is with you. Oh, tap your chest, say, God is with me. If God was not in this place, this man would have been dead by now. <laughs> For a long time. So it doesn't matter how many years you struggled to come out, you are going to come out. Sometimes it takes longer than expected. But delay is no denier. Sometimes the load you carry is heavier than you expected. But Jesus is still our burden bearer. Sometimes your fear is not out of fear. But out of what is this? But if it's from God, that's a good one. Mary said, what is this? What are you saying? Going to conceive, have a baby. I'm not married. I know no man. Angel said, it's favor. Thank God, that's favor. To have what you don't have and become your own is favor. Especially if your reproach is removed. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh God. Let me look at the scripture again. And he said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And the, his kingdom shall be no end. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto, in, unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. That is one of the biggest problems today. God is telling me do the impossible. God is showing me big revelation. God is telling me my reproach is gone. God is telling Mary now said, God says, I'm going to conceive. God says, I'm going to give birth to a son. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. But I'm not married. How shall this thing be? Maybe you are there this morning. Maybe you are hearing me on the radio. Or you are going to watch this program by television in Africa anywhere. All that God sent to you that are bigger than you is small for God. Anything too high for you is below God. But Mary asked a good question. 
How can God ask me to build a big facility like this when I have no money? And the angel answered, The Holy Ghost! Oh, somebody jump up and say, The Holy Ghost! I said, Jump up and say, The Holy Ghost! <laughs> All the years, I've heard of the Carpenter's Home Church. I wonder whether the pastor was a human being. <laughs> then, two years ago, he was one of our key speakers at ICBM. He opened his mouth and shook the thousands of people that stood there. And I said, well, if this man thinks he has trouble and he's shaking those with trouble, then his trouble is not too big. You will never, you never, never, I'm not sure you remember the message you preached to those 7,000 people that night. He gave them confidence. He gave us hope. He told us it doesn't matter how much we are bruised and shaking. God can steal your tempest. And I'm here this morning just in case you are passing through fire. Don't stop. Pass through. For David said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, me, it didn't say you, but it said I, shall fear no evil. Somebody say Amen. Can I fulfill a dream bigger than what I am? Holy Ghost. How can I have a car when my salary cannot feed me? Holy Ghost. How can I build a house when I lost my job? Holy Ghost. How can I live in peace when everything around me is peacing? Holy Ghost. How do I know I will be well when I'm very sick? Holy Ghost. Who will lift me up when I'm down and everybody around me is down? Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Holy Ghost. Let me hear you again. Say it again. When you are weak, who do you need? When you are down, who do you need? When you are poor, who do you need? When you don't know what to do, what do you need? When everything around you is falling down, what do you need? Everybody say, Holy Ghost! Let me hear you say, Holy Ghost! can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures, 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. To her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. I quoted from your book to one of my books, Faith for All Lives Tom. You will see a chapter that concerns you there. I quoted you verbatim. That the devil doesn't touch his own like he touched what is not his own. But hear what the word of God is saying here. When anything in your life is too big for you to handle, hide under the shadow of the Most High. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. That's why you are alive today. If it wasn't the power of the highest, they would have shown me your tomb. But the power of the highest is higher than anything else. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, let's set that one aside. What God sent me here for, I'm getting close to it. To this church this morning. This ministry... This ministry, I prophesy, cannot be destroyed by man. It's under the power of the Most High. I said that by the authority God put in my mouth. Carpenter's church was not built by man's ego. It was built by God's revelation. And I want to say this. If you allow the vision of this home church to die, God will not blame that man. He will blame you. Ask me why. Put your hand and say why. Everybody say, I do this in my home church and I'm not afraid to do it here. Point your hand to me and say why. Now do this say why will God blame me? Because God told him to do it, that you may continue to keep it. Did you hear me? I said, did you hear me? God told him to build this, that you may keep it. He's done his part. If you don't play your part, God will blame you, will not blame him. Did you hear me? God said, Carl, build me a testimony house in Lakeland. Build it by my provision. Build it in the face of all odds. He obeyed God. Now the challenge is your own to fill this house with souls. 
The challenge is your own to bring men and women to worship God in this church. Somebody said big hallelujah. You say, that, how do I do that? The Holy Ghost. Lift your hand and say, Holy Ghost. Wave your hand and say, Holy Ghost. Sit down. Now listen to how to carry out the vision that is bigger than you. That's my message. How to carry out, say that to everybody. The vision. I didn't hear you. That is bigger than me. Say it again. Don't be a, tell your neighbor, I want you to learn how to carry out the vision that is bigger than you. Listen to this. And be, listen to this. Behold, verse 26, let's read it together. Once you go, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. It doesn't matter whatever name they call you in the past. Let it be was. You didn't hear me. Mary, what God is telling me to tell you is that your cousin Elizabeth, at her old age, who was called barren, has conceived, and the baby in her womb is now six months old. Who was called? I don't care what you called me before. Give me a new name. Your old name is not important. Your new name is very, very important. She was called barren, but now she's pregnant. And the baby is six months old. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, look at verse 27. For with God, verse 37. For with God. Oh, I didn't hear you. That's not in your Bible. For with God what? For with God what? For with God what? <sighs> Many times with you and I. There are many things we cannot do. Not with God. Many times. There are many things that God gives us grace to do. That flesh cannot do. But thank God that with God. Say I'm with God. I didn't hear you. Because I'm with God. All things are possible. I'm with God. Because I'm with God. All things are possible. Shout hallelujah. For with God, nothing is impossible. Mary had that. Look at what Mary did. And Mary, Mary said, Behold the hand of the Lord, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city called Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, sir. May I borrow you for one minute? Come, bring your Bible. Yes, come. Yes, sir. Listen to this. And Gabriel said to Mary, I've given you all the message God gave me for you. I'm going. But look at these words. And hear it in your ears. 
God said, you, Mary, will give back to his son. And the seed from you shall be called the son of the highest. But for you to know that what I'm saying is true. For you to know. Come on, woman leader, come. You black dress woman, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, ma'am. This is Elizabeth. You lady, come. Yes, please come. Don't be ashamed. This is your father's I met you here. This is, for example, Mary. This is... Elizabeth, I am Zachariah, you are Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel said, Mary, your cousin Elizabeth, who was called barren, now has six months baby in her womb. She was called barren. She was called barren was not now god has taken her reproach away somebody say hallelujah i don't care how many years you carry reproach there's a day god takes the reproach away somebody say amen but the bible says this pastor mary arose mary had the sense to go to look for elizabeth if god tells you to do the impossible don't look for who have not done it somebody say i hear you that is why this is a secret today come on son steve no come sir come please don't blame me i'm at home <laughs> If you are looking for a visitor, send for another pastor. Every time I see your father in Oaruyu, and I look at what Ora Robert have done, and I look at what your father have, I've been to this place three times without letting your father know. I've looked around this whole property. But any man that wants to defeat set back must constantly look at his success. This is a success story. This place is a success story. Yeah. This is not a defeated place. Right. This is, tap your feet, say this is a success story. Yeah. This is a success story. Yeah. Where you are now is a success story. But every time I see your dad in Tulsa, and I look around the entire properties, in ORU and look at the property here I look at similar story I look at the similarity of is possible when your dad did this he didn't know how to do it open your ears but God told him how to do it yeah. now that it has been done no fear God is not only author, he's author and finisher. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. That's one story, you keep that within yourself. God who provided this place, will sustain this place. Yeah. That's my prophecy number one. Number two, Mary went to look for Elizabeth. If you want to be inspired... Don't look for who has expired. Elizabeth is a proof that what God is telling you is true. She was called barren, but she's now pregnant with six month baby in her. When you want your vision to be fulfilled, go and look for Elizabeth, who was called barren. Who is no more barren. If you want your vision to rise, go look for Elizabeth. Because the Bible said, when Mary arrived in Elizabeth's house, the baby in her womb lifted up. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Look for someone to lift up your vision. Look for someone who will make your baby lift. Not somebody who will cause you abortion. Not somebody who will cause you miscarriage. Look for whose vision can challenge your vision. Look for whose story is a true story. Everybody say yeah! Elizabeth is a proof that what God is telling you is true. Elizabeth is a consolation to barrenness. Elizabeth is the answer to your question. How can this thing be? Go and see Elizabeth. Elizabeth has a baby in his womb who stands up to say is right. If you don't want your vision to die, visit Elizabeth. If you want God to confirm what he's telling you, visit Elizabeth. Many of you have friends that are still barren. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. Many of us have friends that are tear bearers. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. You don't need who will weigh you down. You need who will lift you up. Somebody say hallelujah. You don't need someone that is annoyed of what God is doing with you. You need someone who will rejoice in your miracle. Somebody say hallelujah. All of you follow me. Just a minute sir. Before you leave. Come back. Come back. Come back. Four of you come around me. I will soon let you go. Come and look at this. <sighs> she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And when, and whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe lived in my womb for joy. Yeah. Yeah. From now, the only visitor you must entertain is who will bring you joy. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Don't go to where your vision will be blown. Don't visit who will tell you that's not God, that's the devil. Look for who will tell you, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Look for who will tell you, though he slay me, yet shall I follow him. Can I hear you? Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mary, thank God you went to Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a reminder that whom God say he is is whom he is. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth is a reminder that old age does not stop miracle. Yeah. Elizabeth is a reminder that if God says something to you, no matter how long it takes, he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. Lastly, Elizabeth is a fulfillment. That God can visit man mm -hmm. with joy yeah. in the midst of sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. How many of you want to ask God to give you friendly Elizabeth today? Come forward right now. How many of you want your vision to become new? How many of you want God to give you new direction? How many of you want to say, God, you put me here and Satan will not take me away? How many of you want to say, God, here am I, use me? How many of you want to say, God, make me an instrument? Come forward right now. This is not just altar call for salvation. This is altar call for rededication. How many of you know that God is the one that put you in this ministry? How many of you know that God is the one that sent you to Cabinet Home Church? Get up and come and meet me here right now. Quickly, 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 quickly. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, come closer, come closer, come closer. 
I want everybody, as many as can get up and say, I'm going to rededicate myself. I'm going to recommit myself to the vision of this. I spent four hours last night praying on what to say to you. You know why? To whom much is given, much is expected. This is a vision we must not allow to die. God bet this place. We must be alive to keep it alive. How many of you can say amen to that? We build both city and village churches. If they had left me and said, God bless you, devil would have killed me. But they join hand with me to say, Lord, what would thou have me do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to believe God. No sickness in your body will follow you home. No pain in your body will follow you home. And everything that God asks you to do in this ministry, you will not be discouraged to go back. I want you to get up and say, God, you sent me to Carpenter's Home Church. Use me. God, make me a soul winner. God, make me an instrument of honor in your hand. If that is you, come forward right now. Get up from where you are and join us here. Thank you. Thank you. From this side, come forward. This is not Dr. Carsweta's church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. He was just an instrument to do it. But this is the work of the Lord. Can I hear you say amen? Thank you. Are you all right there? Thank you. Fine. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God for your commitment. Thank God for your commitment. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Oh, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift your hands up. Oh, raise your hands. Say with me, Lord, here am I. Use me. Lord, here am I. Stir my spirit. Lift me up again. Give me joy in your service to follow you all the days of my life. I know, Lord, you put me here to work for you, to work for you, to labor in your vineyard. I commit myself afresh to you from now to serve you and do whatsoever you call upon me to do in faithfulness, in tithes. In offering, in giving, in preaching, in ministering. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I surrender myself to you. In Jesus' name. Say loud, Amen. amen. Put your hands down. Listen to this. If you forget everything I have said today, don't forget this. God is the one that brought you to this church. Not man. Not him. Not Steve. But God. But God put them here to give you direction. Sometimes, sometimes, our faith is weak. But God whom we are following is not weak. Sometimes we are discouraged. But we are not discouraged. Because he who is in us is encouraging us. I want you to rededicate yourself. If every one of you here this morning will win one soul. This time, next month, this church will be double. God didn't give you this facility so you can stroll in and stroll out. So you can beg God to give you miracle. Then you go out and face obstacles. You are to use here as a center of excellence to win soul for the kingdom of God. How many will say, God, here am I, use me? Amen. I want you now to put your right hand on your forehead. 
Say after me. My dear father. By your stripes. I'm healed. From the crown of my head. To the sole of my feet. I'm healed. In body. In soul. In spirit. I'm healed. Now. In Jesus name. Amen. Now put your hand there. Father, I take authority and dominion over every foul attack of the enemy. In these bodies, from this minute, I rebuke the devourer. I curse the destroyer. I command you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You are our healer and our restorer. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. I thank you for your recommitment to God. In service and in the call of his life ministry. I pray that today, upward, all your friends will be Elizabeth. Who when you go to their home, the vision in you will lift up. Not the person who you tell, God just gave me a new car. And you say, what? Are you sure you are a Christian? No. You need someone who will stir your vision up. Somebody who will spur you to action. Somebody you say, I'm going to an evening service. Who will say, I'm going to. Not the one that we asked you, were you not there last week? You need a challenger for good. And not a destroyer of evil. Amen. 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 Every living thing, two of every sort shall be brought into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time. To this world is called trouble and the day you will know that salvation does not eliminate trials the fact that you are baptized with the holy ghost does not send devil to hell jesus didn't say kill the devil he said cast him out i hope you understand the difference if you cast him out from atlanta he may go to chicago but he's still there 
No matter how holy you are, holiness does not push Satan to hell. Holiness makes you a better person. Say amen. Holiness makes you live longer. Say amen. Holiness makes you an instrument in the hand of God. Say amen. But your righteousness does not kill the devil. You know what the Lord told me? He said, if you permit me to test you at the beginning, it will stand for a long time. I do not want to ride a Mercedes as a boy and ride a bicycle as an adult. I prefer every trial that I have from God. Give it to me while I'm young. So when I'm old, I can cross my feet. I can say, I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sees. Thank you for Christ. become the act of this church every Sunday to find out the person you're standing near, how they have been during the week. Someone needs your smile. Someone needs your love. And that's what we are here for. For the next several reasonable minutes, I want to speak on what I call the knockdown for a rising up. Did you hear me? Many, many times before God lifts you high, He knocks you down first. I don't know why, so I want to speak on the subject, the knocking down for a lifting up. Tell your neighbor, the knocking down for a lifting up. Be seated. Daniel chapter 10. Lift your Bible if you have one this morning. Don't come to church with newspaper. Come with your Bible. 
Lift it up say, have my Bible. Amen. Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethesda. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. How can you imagine Almighty God show you something real? It's like God bringing out $1,000 and says, Son, I heard you are in need. I heard you have need of $1,000. I have it. And you stretch your hand to pick it and say, Hold on. How will you feel? If the good things you dreamt about, the thing that God showed you is going to use you to do, accomplish in life, the lives of nations for you to reach. God told you, I'm going to use you to go to Australia 10 years ago. And he said, get ready, pack your things, get ready for Australia. And you tell your wife, on my way to, I'm on my way now to Australia. The Lord told me last night, go to Australia, go to Sydney, conduct a seminar. I'm going to stand by you. You are going to heal many people. The Lord will use you to change lives. And you are dancing and jumping. You tell your wife, you tell your children. Then you come to church in the morning and say, Bishop, the Lord said I should go to Australia. And I know you are going to send me. I said, Don, I didn't say God didn't say so, but you are not going. You are going to say, I rebuke you. You wouldn't say it out, but you rebuke him. But many times, when you rebuke God, he refused to rebuke. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Yeah. Several times, I tried to say, God, that's not you, so I bind the devil. He said, when you finish binding, see me. <laughs> I don't know why. But here is what the Bible is saying to you and I. A thing was revealed. A thing was made known to Daniel. And the thing was true. But. True. But. How do you have endurance for but? How patient are you? When you are anxious to get married, and any brother you say good morning to say, don't tempt me. <laughs> How patient are you when you are in hurry to have baby, and you get married, and the doctor diagnoses you to have fibrous, and say to you, your pregnancy is in doubt. Or you say, I'm pregnant. And you are very anxious, you start to buy things for your baby. Now you go to the gynecologist and say, lie down. They examine you and say, you have no baby. How do you handle those times of expectation that fall short of good things? What do you feel? When your ears are tuned to hear good news, and the person you ask good news gives you bad news. How do you handle your time and God's time. Do you mean that God can tell a lie? The answer is no. Does it mean that God doesn't know what he's telling you? The answer is no. My question to you this morning, can God deceive a man? My answer to you is no. But what happens if your time and his time doesn't agree? was true but the time appointed was not yet that's one of the things that we have no patience for the time appointed not yet how do you deal with appointment not yet how do you deal with you find you look for a home to buy and your friend come to you and say doctor I just found 
three homes near my home. They are selling them auction. The house is worth two million, but they want to sell it for hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And you go to your bank in anxiousness, and the bank says you are not credit worthy. How do you feel when you think after going around the building, you already made up this is my room, this is for my wife, this is for my son, this is my daughter, this is where the guest room, this is going to be oh Lord, oh la mahaka solo boroya. This is the Lord's doing. After you have bragged and your swollen spirit is punctured, how do you handle that aspect of your life? Do you still say all things work together for good? Are you using your time to time God? Or you are working on God's timing. I have now known from 37 years of knowing the Lord that many times my time and his time is not the same. I'm anxious, he's not anxious. I'm in hurry, he's the God of peace. A brother came to me two years ago, doctor said, Papa, Papa, I need prayer. I said, what do you need prayer for? He said, I need the gift of patience. I said, when? He said, now. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. What gift do you need? Patience. When? Do you understand that? If you need patience, you don't need it now. Do you understand English? <laughs> I need prayer for patience. When do you want the prayer? Now. You've already failed the test. So if you need that patience, you say it and go. That's patience. But if you want it now, you don't need patience. You're asking for the gift of anxiety. <laughs> now look at verse 2. And I will tell you as if message continue how to handle that the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision in those days i daniel was mourning three full weeks i ate no pleasant bread neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth neither did i anoint myself at all till three whole weeks we are fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose leons were guided with fine gold of offer. His body also was like the bell and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms as feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my commonliness was turned into me, into corruption, and I retained no strength. How do you feel when you want to stand and you see yourself on the floor? This is not devil dealing with Daniel. This is God. I saw what God showed me. I saw what God said. But what God showed me knocked me down. Feel when the man you told all your secrets sell you out. How do you feel when your confidence becomes your betrayer? do you feel when the person that says go ahead see you fall and say I told you you are going to fall 
What happens when the person you lean on gives way? To you women, how will you feel after three years of preparing for a wedding? Next week will be the wedding day. And on Thursday, the man says, the Lord told me not to. Do you still say, to God be the glory? Do you still remember that the Bible said, not one hair we pull out of your head without noticing God? Do you remind yourself that the step of a righteous man is ordered by God? How do you handle disappointment? Daniel said, the Lord knocked me down. And all who journeyed with me fled. How do you handle, let us pray. And then you meet with your committee members, ministers. This way, all of you come here. Quick, quick, quick. Pastor John, leave your team here. Tomorrow and next tomorrow, no food, no water, no eating, no traveling, no movement. Come closer. I'm talking now as Archbishop. Presbyters, tomorrow, this is illustration. No food, <laughs> no water, no going to a job. We must all be here at 7 a.m. for prayer. We want to see the move of God in this ministry. Yes or no? Everybody, yes or no? Yes. Congregation, yes or no? Yes. What happens if those we discuss and they say, Pastor, announce. And then you, suddenly when we close, not you, but this is illustration. <laughs> I heard, we heard, we heard what he said. But does that mean that we have nothing to do? You going to do that? You going to take part? Coming here by six o'clock for the rest of the week. You go nowhere, no. and not me. Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? Aren't you busy? Don't you have anywhere to go? Don't you have any? You? you understand? You are my number two man. Okay. Yeah. You preach the opposite of what I preach for today. Right. You tell them what to do. All right. Yeah. We're not going to do it. No, gonna. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't you have where to go? Don't you have anywhere to go? You don't have where to go? You think choir should be singing for the whole of the week? What's my microphone here? Just a minute. What happened if the person you told what God told you, now take the microphone and preach opposite? And then suddenly tomorrow morning you are here by 6 o'clock. And all of them, only two came. The rest of you, bye bye. Go, go back to your seat. <laughs> what happened when you expected 30 people and two came? And the two that came said, we just came to take excuse from you. <laughs> we are somewhere we are going. You know, before you made your announcement, I, I already planned my life out. You didn't give me notice. So, will you also go away? You have somewhere to go? You're not going? What of you? going to be right here. You're going to be here? Yes. That's surprising. <laughs> Where are the rest people? Don't follow the crowd. You, you're not going to follow the crowd? They You're going to stay with me? They, had else to go. they have somewhere else to go. But you have to follow me to follow the Lord. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, do you know that with these two, we can do more than with the crowd? <laughs> God is looking for willing hearts. God is looking for few. Who will stay like Esther? If I perish, I perish. God is looking for you like Ruth. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. This congregation is very important. But God doesn't use all to win all. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? I told my wife 4 o'clock this morning. I said, one of the trouble you and I have, I couldn't just tell her she has. I have to say we. <laughs> but I know I was talking to her.
One of the trouble two of us have. It's not me and you, it's only you, but you of us have. Have you ever talked like that? You know that you are saying the real thing, but you don't know how to put it so she's not offended. Is that you try to struggle with unwilling people. Many times the people you call your number two are not even number ten. Many times the people you think you're going to lean on on the day of trouble have no back. So many times the people you think this is natural. Don't you think when trouble come, we stand by you are looking for who will stand by them. It's natural. Daniel said, I fell down. The earth quakes. Your business earth may quake. Your marriage earth may quake. Your family earth may quake. When your ground quake and everyone you look up to flee from you. What do you do? Do you because you're said to be relied on man fled, you flee from your vision? Should you abort your dream because you thought I was going to stand by you and I fled from you? Daniel said, I alone. I saw the vision. I knew what God said. When they all fled, I remained on the ground. I lost my strength, but I didn't lose my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Every man may flee from you. Every friend may turn their back. He has promised. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The ground may shake so much that you have no life to stand. But the God that gave you the vision will not cancel the vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know what is quaking around you. I don't know what is pushing you down. I know if God gives you a knockdown, He's going to give you a lifting up. It may be a financial knockdown. It may be a marriage knockdown. It may be a business knockdown. It may be a family knockdown. It may be a, a relationship knockdown. But if for any reason God allows you to be knocked down, He's getting ready to lift you up. I lost my strength. The strength in me. Now you're talking of friends fled from you. That's what Daniel is saying. He said, not only my friend left me, my strength left me. What happened to you when you are not enough for yourself? Is anybody hearing me this morning? The day you will know that the second name to this world is called trouble. And the day you will know that salvation does not eliminate trials. The fact that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost does not send devil to hell. Jesus didn't say kill the devil, he said cast him out. I hope you understand the difference. If you cast him out from Atlanta, he may go to Chicago, but he's still there. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Jesus didn't kill devil. He cast him out. That's why he's still able to operate. But once you know that heaven and earth may pass away, but God and his word will remain the same. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at the next verse here. I lost my strength. Come on, pastor. I fell on the ground. 
Yet I heard the voice, verse 9, of his words. And when I heard the voice of his word, then was I in a deep sleep on my face. And my face toward the ground. How do you, do you think they are hearing what I'm saying? If you want to stand and you see yourself flat, not, not only knock down, but knock down, knock out. Did you hear me? If everything you thought, oh God, is going to work, did it work? What happened when hallelujah turned to sorry hallelujah? What do you do when, praise the Lord, turn to sorry hallelujah? Painful hallelujah. Disappointment, Luya. What happens when your friends begin to laugh at your cause? And they say, we know God didn't send you. You sent yourself. Do you pass out or you rise up? What did David do when David found himself in this situation? David said, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. What did Isaiah say? Isaiah said, when you see yourself in that situation, rise and shine. What did Job say? Job 22, 29, when they say, cast down, then thou shalt say, there's a lifting up. What did the Shunammite woman say when the son died? One and only son. She said, All is well. All is well. My baby is well. My husband is well. My marriage is well. But the baby died. All is well. What do you do? The day you want to travel and rain for. And you have no money for transportation. Do you say. How I wish I wasn't born. Job said. I wish I wasn't conceived. And if I was conceived I should have been aborted. And if I'm not aborted. Woe is the day he was born. But at the end of his story he said. When the Lord must have tried me, I will comfort like gold. Do you know there's a shining waiting for your ugly moments? Somebody say hallelujah. There's that period you have to go through fire to achieve your life dream. There is that time in your life no matter how holy you are, holiness does not push Satan to hell. Holiness makes you a better person. Say amen. amen. Holiness makes you live longer. Say amen. amen. Holiness makes you an instrument in the hand of God. Say amen. amen. But your righteousness does not kill the devil. He knocked me down. I heard a voice. I heard a voice. Verse 10. Read with me loud. Come on, pastors. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. There's a lifting for a knockdown. There's a hand not far away. There's a hand willing to pick you and I up. There's a hand 
ready to take us out of our dead room. It doesn't matter how long, how many hours, how many days. Daniel said three weeks plus, I was on the ground. When I lost my strength, when I lost my energy, when my neighbors fled, a voice came to me. I'm saying to you today, and whatever you may hear me, if all you know to do have been done and is not good enough, stay where God will meet you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't run from your goal. There's a lifting for a knockdown. If man knock you down, God will not degrade for you. If money knock you down, God will not bury you. I can see here God say to you, rise and shine. Your light is come. Your light is come. Daniel said, a hand touched me. When the hand touched me, he told me, get up. Every child of God here this morning, get up. If you're a man or woman of God, get up. Say with me loud, I'm getting up. up. Say it louder. Say one more time. Make it true. I am getting up. up. Move your fist. I'm getting up. I'm I'm moving on. I'm I'm getting up. I'm I'm moving on. I'm I'm getting up. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Watch us. Say to me, get up. Get up. I didn't hear you. Get up. Say to me, move on. Move on. Move on. Knock down. Get up. Get up. Knock down. Lift up. Move on. Say, move on. Move on. Say, move on. Move on. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
in the valley of trouble. Walk through all your valleys. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no You don't need sympathizers. You don't need sorry I heard what happened. Get up. Get up. Say it again. And do what? Say it again. Two more times. How many of you would get up and move on? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Let me read to you what will happen if you get up and move on. See what the Bible says will happen to you. Verse 12, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. Say with me, From now I will not be afraid. <laughs> For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, the words we are heard, and I'm come for thy watch. Say with me, in my not down time, God will hear me and lift me up. Now look at me, everybody. Look at me. Don't move one inch. Don't do any other thing. Do you understand what you are saying? That only trial can bring you triumph. And only obstacle will bring you miracle. Many of you think the man who knocked you, the quick that knocked you down, will pick you up. Anyone that was kind enough to knock you down will not be kind enough to raise you up. <laughs> and if I want to tell you the truth, any man that hates you enough to knock you down cannot love you to pick you up. <laughs> Say, I hear you. Several times, as a young preacher, Dr. Petri, I thought those who knocked me down would come and pick me up. I waited so long and none of them came. <laughs> Until I found out that the Lord live and blessed be them. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord and blessed be and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is for to be how shall I be And lift you from your knockdown. They knock out and they knock down for a lifting up. If God permits you to fall, He will stand by you to rise. How many can say amen to that? How many of you want God to raise you up? Usher, shut all the doors for me. I want to pray the prayer of faith. Usher, shut all the doors. Let's give the Holy Spirit five minutes for the battle that we can win on our knees than with our mouth. The hand touched me. The Lord spoke to me. 
He said, from the day you set your heart, I heard you. But the prince of Persia stood these 21 days. When he had spoken unto me, verse 15, the words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. From shouting to dumbness. Oh, because of the vision. Don, did you hear that? Vision can knock you down. Vision can take your strength. Vision can make you dumb. But stay by your vision. Stay by what God showed you. Stay by the revelation of God. A lifting is coming nearby. A hand is coming nearby. Somebody shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you stay on the ground. The same power that quake the ground. The same power that knock you down. God is going to use his own force to lift you up. The 16th verse says here, And behold, one like this similitude of the Son of Man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. I am talking to you of reality. What God asks you to do that is impossible to men can almost kill you. But you will never die. I say you will never die. I say you will never die. The storm may take your roof. The storm may take your sheep. The storm may take your health. But the storm will not take your life. I see a lifting from your knockdown. Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. The ground may dry, but I hear a sound. God is about to speak to his church. Lazy people don't go far. Unwilling to endure, don't go far. But they stand by God. They stand up by God. Those who stand by God, those who lean upon the Lord. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Seventeenth verse. Look at the seventeenth verse. For now, for how can the servant of this my Lord talk with his, with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway, there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and taught me one. <laughs> if the first touch can do it, if the second touch can come, it's not the devil shaking you. It is the Lord. It's not your sin that brought your trial. The Bible did not say the test of your sin, the trial of your sin. He said the trial of your faith. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? <laughs> you think it was your sin that did that? It's your faith. It's a dream that is bigger than your expectation. God is... Oh my God, my hokoso. Pastor Don, you know what the Lord told me? He said, if you permit me to test you at the beginning, you will stand for a long time. I do not want to ride a Mercedes as a boy. 
and ride a bicycle as an adult. I'm so glad you didn't hear what I say. I prefer every trial that I have from God. Give it to me while I'm young. So when I'm old, I can cross my feet. I can say, I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sits begging for bread. How many can say amen to that? Every trouble that God will give to you at 75 years old, may he give it to you when you are 25. Because the time of old age is a time of relaxation. People ask me in Nigeria every time, how are you able to handle criticism? I say, because I died. A dead man doesn't reply. Many of you are replying because you are not dead yet. Paul said, it's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> he touched me another time. I lost my strength. But he brought his hand again. Then the came. Give me the microphone. Let him read it with American English. <laughs> Verse 18. Then there came again, and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. What did God do when he meet you on the floor? I say, what do God do when he meet you on the ground? You mean he doesn't pressure and say, are you still living? What does he do? I say, what does God do? Then what does he say to you? Get up and do what? One more time, get up and get up and Perel, Bishop Perel, Bishop Adrian, every child of God, get up. Me verse 19 in American language. And said, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. And he said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Everybody do this. Say, My Lord, my Lord. has strengthened me. Let me tell you three things to do. Don't reject knockdown. But don't die there. down, move forward. Everyone who wants to move forward, just move forward a bit. No matter how close, move forward. Everybody who wants God to give you strength to go forward. Move forward to tell God to change the situation. Don't come to the church to die. Come to the church and energize yourself. Don't be afraid of trial, but don't die in your temptation. 
verse 20. From now, I will stand by you to fight for you. I will return again to fight for you. How many of you want God to fight your battle every time? It's true. I was not down this morning. But come back and see me in the evening. For weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. 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 Everybody said joy. I prophesy your days of tears are over. Your days of downcast is over. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Keep your hand on top. I heard God so. Where there's a cast down, there's a lifting. Where the road close, there can be another road. Where there is sickness, there's healing. Where there's poverty, there's prosperity. And the Lord asked me to ask you, do you need my helping hand? How many of you need the helping hand of God? Raise your hand towards me. Daniel didn't say, the earth quaked again. He said, hand touch me. And I can see God lowering his hand to touch you wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I bow my knees on behalf of the bishop, the senior pastors, the presbytery, the youth ministry, every department of our ministry here, and the global ministry here represented, I bow my knees. I stretch my hand to everyone. Yesterday is the last night of your knockdown. I see God raise you up. I see God raise you up. I hear God say to you, Go on. Go on. Don't let the dream die. You may faint and lose your strength. But the vision will not die. It may tarry. But it's going to come back. Holy Spirit. Touch. 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 Holy Spirit, touch. Lose them and let them go. 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 Restore their dreams. Restore their vision. Renew their strength. Thank you, Lord. You told me, if they ask you for help, you will do it. And I trust you that every sickness they brought here is killed. Every fear and doubt is gone. The Lord touched you for the second time. Raise you to energize you. Lift you up and put you on the way to God. And the dream shall not die. In Jesus name. Everybody say Amen. amen.
There is a prophetic word from the Lord. I and they that God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. That is the word of God. It's time to rise. It's time to rise. Today, nothing will stop me. I am going to have my harvest. Come on, everybody. I don't care whether I'm in order or not in order. Whether I'm under protocol or no protocol. Whether it is legal or it's not legal. I am going to get my miracle. If you dare to be out of order tonight, you'll reach God. If you dare to be out of protocol tonight, you'll reach God. I tell you, your new season, your new season is here. The Lord said, I'm healing you. The world break down. The saints should bring forth for joy. Light and power and big of vitality. And if Christ ever healed, he can heal today. The crusade of the century. Welcome the Archbishop Professor Benson in the Hosa. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. One of the greatest lessons I have learned is that Nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for Him to pay attention. God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in His name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say amen. Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecy is, thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Thank you, every one of us. Stand to your feet. This is a mighty sanctuary for which we give God the glory. I want to thank Archbishop Bolden and family, and you family from Tampa, for coming to support us here tonight. I thank God that 
This is an inspiration ground. I say this is an inspiration ground. This is a beautiful place that anyone who believes in good should rejoice about. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting us tonight. If Jesus were here physically tonight, he will ask you two questions. Number one, why are you here? Number two, what do you want? He will not say more than that. Many times we are in the church not asking God anything. And many times we just take it as a routine. I read one day in my Bible. It said, this is your life. Serving God is your life. Knowing Christ is your life. And just in case you are here tonight to ask God nothing for yourself, ask Him something for me. Did you hear that? Just in case you don't know why you are here tonight, be here for me. Because to be in the house of God, I don't know why you are there, is a waste of time. And then to be in the house of God, to ask God nothing, is also a waste of time. So you must not miss the two things. Why are you here? To worship the Lord. Why are you here? To ask Him. I love what you did for us just now. I'm going to adopt it at home. For the pastor to ask every family to come out tonight. That's something new. And what I say is this. Whatever you find that is good in where you go, take it home. Amen. When, when I came to America first time about 30 years ago, the press man asked me, America is a terrible place. What did you see? I said, I said, only good things. If you are looking for bad news, ask New York Times. If you are looking for good news, ask me. We are ambassadors of good news. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Amen. Thank you once again, Dr. Strader, for giving us the opportunity to be here with you as a family. Before you sit down, lift up your Bible before you sit down. Those of you brethren from Canada, we are so happy to have you here with us. I thank God for the privilege of preaching in Canada for the last 27 years. Let me see your Bible lifted up. Say with me, this is my sword. To defeat principalities and powers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. For the few years I have been in the ministry, which is almost 40 years, one of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. One day, as a young preacher, I came across the scripture I'm going to read tonight. Don't preach it too much, but just read it. There is power in the word of God. How many of you believe that? Oh, lift your hands and say, I believe in the word of God. Look at the book of Nahum. In America, you call it many things, but in English it's called Nahum. N-A-H-U-M. Nahum. Let's say that in American English. Oh, good. Thank God. I'm not too far from you. Look at verse 7. Nahum chapter 1. The Lord is good. Oh, somebody say that. Maybe I'm not talking of your own tonight. I'm talking of my own. My God is a good God. For years, as a young preacher, as a young man, I first heard that from the mouth of the man who is now the president of our university, Ora Robert. Something good is going to happen to you. 
And a few years ago, less than 30 years ago, I heard this said, God is a good God. Somebody say, Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Listen to this. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. I am wondering how someone that is good, I who is in trouble, is permitted to hold him. May I make that a little slower. God is good. Say that. Now say that with me. Now say this with me. When I'm in trouble, you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. trouble did anybody hear that God has no trouble how many of you believe that oh yes <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 the Lord God made the heaven and earth and the earth was void not heaven <laughs> every time there is trouble there is not one in heaven like on earth I've never heard earthquake in heaven. I've never heard thunder blast in heaven. I've never heard bomb in heaven. I've only read once in my Bible there was war in heaven. It didn't last too long. The man who caused the war in heaven was cast down. Somebody say hallelujah. Now listen to this. I want to make it as easy to you as I've made it easy for myself. God is good. The Lord is good. Say that two times. I didn't hear you. But when I'm in trouble, say that. He permits me to hold him. I may not make sense to you, but I'm making sense to myself.
May I borrow you one more time as I did this morning? All right. This man is a man of God. Whether you believe it or not, he is. <laughs> now, he's not just been a man of God, but he's a good man. Assuming that I am terrible. And assuming that I'm very, very bad. He stands and says, Benson Idahosa, I'm a good man, I'm a godly man, but whenever you are in trouble, hold me. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? All right, that's not American English. American English will be like this. This man is well fed. He has enough food in his house. Now he's saying to me, Benson Idahosa, any day you are hungry, come to me for food. Did you hear what I'm saying? If he was worse than me, he can't help me. Did you hear that? If he's in more trouble than I am, he can't help me. But he has no trouble. He's good. Oh, somebody say he's good. The Lord is what? The Lord is what? Good. I want to make it easy for you to understand. When you are in trouble, you don't need a man with double trouble. You need a man that has no trouble to hold to, to take you out of trouble. It is like if I'm on the floor and I fall, I don't need a man in the pit to lift me up. Sir, can you lift me up? I'll sure try. <laughs> lift me up, sir. Now, why did he lift me up? He is standing. Do you understand what I'm saying? This man lifted me up because I was down. If he was there, and I'm here, and I'm looking for help, I don't need him. I need a man who is not in trouble like me to give me help. I need someone who is well to pray for me when I'm sick. I need someone who is alive to give me life when I'm dying. I don't need a dead man to pray for me to live. The Lord is good. Say that. Now, say it again. A stronghold. Did you hear that? God is what? Strong to hold. God is strong to hold when I'm in trouble. Oh my God, you didn't hear that. The Lord is good, say it. A stronghold for me when I'm in trouble. Join the three together. The Lord is good. Strong enough for me to hold when I am in trouble. Oh my God. Don't you think that's whom you need? That's whom I need. Look at what this prophet brought out. In the day of trouble, he's good. He knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. Say, God know me. I trust him. Look at the eighth verse. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an altar end. Of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Look at verse 9. As a Christian, what do you imagine against the Lord? Now that the Bible is telling you God is good, what is the thought in your heart? When I'm in trouble, do I still remember that God is good? That's what he's asking here. 
When things don't go the way I want them to go, do I change my opinion and think that the trouble is from God? His name is good. Oh, somebody said good. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to come to him. Say good. But the prophet is asking, the day you need sun and rain fall, what do you think of God? Is he still good? When you plan wedding and suddenly the plan break down, is God still good? When you want to travel and your car break down, is God still good? The day you have your birthday and your car lost engine, is God still good? When you say tomorrow is my happy day, and you lost someone very close to you, is God still good? What do you imagine against God? Don't forget, He's already good. Don't forget, He's a strong to hold in my days of trouble. Somebody should have said Amen. But, what do you imagine against God? What do you think of God when things are going adversarially against you? Hear what the prophet says. What do you imagine against God? He will make another end. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. That's for you, sir. That's for you, sir. That's for you, sir. That's for you, sir. For every affliction you have experienced, you shall not have a resurrection. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whatever tribulation, whatever trial you saw once, it shall not come back again. If I were you, I would jump up and say, my, my affliction shall not come a second time. I, I didn't say you, I'm talking of me. I say if I were you, I would say this to myself. My affliction shall not have resurrection. Steve, that's for you. Every ugly thing trial you have passed through it shall not come back second time every trial you have passed through he shall not come a second time. All the tears you have shed, he shall not come back a second time. Every shame you have borne, he shall not come back a second time. Somebody say loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Affliction. Your affliction. Your tribulation. Your test to your faith shall not come back a second time somebody say amen, amen. many times it it hurts us beyond forgetfulness when we are hot do you know the day god rescued me dr strader when i read in my bible Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, God. He didn't say it will not pain you, but he said it will not hurt you. Amen. It can pain you without hurting you. Yeah. 
It can pain you. you Sometimes I do things to give you pain. But Jesus said, if I give you pain, turn your pain to gain. Don't allow the pain I give you to become a hurt to your spirit. Many times, those you have helped, those you helped, turn their back against you. But he said, don't let it hurt you. When the people you try to lift, try to put you down, don't be hurt. When those you bless curse you, don't be hurt. When persons you are trying to feed give you a blow, don't be hurt. When anyone you lifted up is looking for something to put you down, don't be hurt. But know this, your affliction shall not come back a second time. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? God is asking me to tell someone, not everybody, but maybe one person. Whatever that thing is that afflicted you before, is not coming back a second time. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Has any one of you ever experienced affliction? Oh, if you are one of them, stand up. If you have ever seen any affliction since you were born. Well, I know you live in America, so there's no trouble in America. But fine. <laughs> but is there anyone here tonight? This is prophecy God brought me here for. I, I, want, to, I want to be myself. Is there anyone that has ever experienced affliction? I'm talking of something is so hurt you, you almost lost control. I'm asking you, have you ever passed through a situation sometimes you wish it was not happening to you? Is there anybody like that here tonight? Is there anyone since you were born was once disappointed? Yeah? Oh, is there anyone that have at any time experienced tears you didn't call for? Almost all my tears, I've never sent for them. They just come. <laughs> Many times that I'm in trouble, I never wrote an application to say, trouble, come to my house. I just see him arrive, and I say, what are you doing here? He say, I'm already here. But listen to what the Bible sent me to tell you tonight. Whatsoever, that pain, that grief, that torture, that trouble, that afflicted you pain, it shall not come a second time. You may be seated, but I'm sent by God to tell you, your last time of a repeated affliction was yesterday. I don't know what that means. I don't know the meaning. But I'm so grateful. My own affliction. We have no resurrection. It shall not come. A second time. The prophet continued in verse 10. Look at his boss. For why they be folding together as tongues, and why they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as trouble, fury dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Verse 12. Thus 
saith the Lord. Though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. I pray this will be for somebody. If it's for no one else, it's for you, sir. It's, it's unimaginable to think you can be serving a good God and something terrible happen to you. And the Lord said, they have imagined evil. I imagine good for you. What do you think of me? That's what they think of you. But what do you think of me? That's what God asked me. People have imagined evil against you. The enemies have said something terrible about you. What do you say of yourself? Because the world afflicted me. And God refused my affliction. <laughs> learn, sir, learn how to turn your scars to stars. Never you let the devil have the last say about your life. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. How many of you can say amen? I just pray that what I'm saying tonight will help you. Whenever you find yourself in trouble, know that good is coming. You didn't hear that. Anytime you see yourself in tears, believe that tears is coming. Anytime you see yourself with obstacles, know that miracles are coming. Oh, somebody should have said amen to that. Amen. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. God is not a wicked God. God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in His name, when we do something good for Him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at this verse 12. I want to repeat it again to your hearing. Hear this. This is prophecy for me and you. Thus says the Lord. Who is speaking here? I'm asking you, who is speaking? Thus says the Lord. Though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. May I ask you one more time? Just by the lifting of your hand, how many of you have passed through trial once? How many of you have seen pain more than once? Oh, in Africa we see pain every day. How many of you have been short of money sometimes? Oh God, you are in America, God's own country. Oh yes. How many of you have at any time received reproach? How many of you at any time have received insult, accusation? God asked me to tell you, I permitted that one. But I will not permit any other one. Did anybody hear what I'm saying?
The one you experienced before, God knew it. But he said, no new one is coming. Did anybody hear that? All right. 13th verse. For now will I break his yoke from off thee. Oh, somebody stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh, Rama, ma, ma, ma. <laughs> You didn't hear that. I hope you hear that. <laughs> I hope you hear that. Steve, did you hear that? God says, that thing that caused you shame, that thing that gave you tears and became a heavy load and a yoke around your neck. I tried this afternoon when I got home to push this message aside and God said, you either preach it or I kill you. <laughs> Tell everyone afflicted the load shall be taken from their shoulders. <laughs> Put your two hands on your shoulders. And march forward here now quickly place your two hands on your shoulder please no matter how big you are get up and come forward just rest your hand on your shoulder I don't know what you believe but I believe that when the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, that's enough for me. Do you know what it means to have a repeated heart? When you close your eyes, you can't sleep. Do you know what it is sometimes when there's food on your table and you have no appetite? I'm talking of me. I don't know about you. Do you know what it means sometimes when you are looking for joy and sorrow comes and you don't know what to do? You see wrong, not because you are wrong, but because wrong wants to see you. But God said, I should tell you, affliction is not coming back a second time. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. When he first came, not because you were wrong. That's what God told me. But he says, he says here, yeah, God is speaking. For now will I break the yoke, the yoke from off that weight, the heaviness, the load that press you down. God says, up, so lift it out of your shoulder. Oh, Baba Yekeleboho. I don't know how long it has taken you, but I have joy to tell you the yoke is off your shoulder. The yoke 
yoki safya shona ni yoki safya shona the greed is of your shoulder the tears of your shoulder the load of your neck somebody say yes lord I have seen many yokes. I've shed many tears for preaching the gospel. But I will never forget the day God told me, then send my son from this night. The yoke is off your shoulder. And from that day, I say this to you, from that day till now, any time I see yoke coming, I say, God, you told me, it's off. You bore my grief, you carried my sorrow. It shall not come back a second time. Somebody say, Hallelujah. This is prophecy for someone tonight. Maybe the load has been there since you were born. <laughs> Maybe that load has been so heavy, you don't know where to turn. It could be marriage load. It could be business load. It could be ministry affliction. It can even be family inherited. But the good news is this. I, the Lord, take it off. <laughs> the Lord Himself. From the day God told me, the load is off my shoulder. In the ministry, I used to have happiness. When there's something good happening. But God said from today, the joy, the joy I give you, I live with you. Not as the world give, give I to you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, <laughs> you are the Lord carrier. You are our burden bearer from the shoulder of your servants. Affliction is gone. Affliction is gone. Affliction is gone. In the name of Jesus. Off. Off. Off your shoulder. The load is gone. Oh. The load is gone. 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 The Lord is gone. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The load is gone. The load is gone. The load is gone. The Lord is gone. The Lord is gone. The Lord is gone, it's gone, it's gone, in Jesus name, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, the Lord is off from your shoulder, in Jesus name, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go in the name of Jesus, let it go, let it go, the Lord is gone, it's gone, it's gone. In Jesus' name, the Lord is off your shoulder. Now, from this night, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it go. In the name of Jesus, let it go. 
Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. Off your shoulder. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I remove the load. In Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. Let it go. Every load. Leave. Every load. I take it away. In the name of Jesus. Let it go. 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 In the name of Jesus. The load is off you. The tears off you. The pain off you. The sorrow off you. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. 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 Then go. Body leave. In Jesus name. Be healed. Be healed. Be free. 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 Let it go. Let it go. Of you. Of you. Of you. Of you. Of you. Of you. Let her get up. Let her get up from the witcher. Come on, move. Get up. Pull the chair back. Go with your feet. It's gone in Jesus' name. Let it go. Get up. Stand to your feet. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Take the witcher back. In the name of Jesus. Free. From your shoulder. Leave. Leave. <laughs> oh, Rabba Mayakadam. Let it go. Let it go. Off your shoulder. Off your shoulder. Off your shoulder. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. It's not yours anymore. It's gone from you. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, gone. It's gone. It's gone. From today, you are free. Let it go. Free. <laughs> free. 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 Come on. Let it go. In Jesus' name, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Peace. Peace. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wave your hand and say hallelujah. Say with me, I'm free. The yoke is broken. It's taken from my shoulder. I'm loose. I'm free. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen to this covenant. May I ask all of you right now to stand to your feet.
Everybody get up. Get up and hold somebody's hand, left and right. Get up, get up. Usher, force them up. Force everyone up. Arise and shine. Your light is come. Rise up. Get up. Hold someone's hand left and right. Say, I'm free. I didn't hear you. Louder. Amen. All right, just quiet now for a minute. Open your eyes and lose your hand and look at me straight. God told me from 315, 245, yeah, what well, it was this afternoon, till five minutes to five. Say to all who carried load, it's off. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Listen, prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophet is, thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Somebody say loud hallelujah. It may shock you to know how many years this man and I have served in the same border region. But three times in the past I've come to see this place. Only last night, God revealed to me to tell him, this work will not hurt you. He has used you to establish it. It shall be sustained. No man will destroy it while you live. And from this night, the yoke is off your shoulder. Oh, lift your hand, say, the yoke is off my shoulder. Say it loud, the yoke is off my shoulder. Say, big hallelujah. hallelujah. Now listen to two more promises God gave me to give you, then I, I finish what I'm here for. Hear this. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee. Commandment. Not a suggestion, commandment. Concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make thy <laughs> oh God <laughs> from this day tearing you to pieces no more. You are no more you of yesterday. Carl, your name changed this morning. Your name changed this morning. I want to do something tonight before we close. If his financial burden is off. If his married burden is off. For the load off your shoulder. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Success stretches people. Success strengthens people. Success brings joy. Success brings happiness.
So many people want success. So many people have achieved success. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. Some of you know how to get there, you don't know how to remove it. Right? But how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks or investing in real estate? To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life transforming teaching by Archbishop B. A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today, how to maintain success. subdue the earth. What we are giving power to subdue cannot relegate us. Is anybody hearing me this morning? When I came to the ministry, Bishop Mike, the greatest complaint was that the church was a nuisance, incapable of getting a new car, incapable of building a church, especially the Pandora's car. They went to church to cry and did nothing. And then the, that was the Christians in the east. And the ones in the west. After sweating for three hours. When the pastor wants to preach for 15 minutes, they sleep for 12 minutes. In my time of coming to the ministry, no pastor in Nigeria, Pentecostal, had a car. And I got worried and said to God, if that's all you can do for those who answer your call, don't call me at all. <laughs> my brain and my IQ is too high to be detained. And said to me, what I have esteemed, who can diminish? <laughs> and he said to me, if you answer my call, I will make you an example. I met the gospel in poverty. I took it from mediocrity to prosperity. <laughs> Find out whether you believe it or not in Nigeria. I was the first to preach that to prosper is the will of God. To be happy is the will of God. To have a car is the will of God. To marry a beautiful wife like this is the will of God. To give your wife microphone is the will of God. For her to sell the book is the will of God. Don't give me 50 copies from somebody in the will of God. I was the first to preach that you can be a Christian and be happy in Africa. I was used by God to introduce prosperity instead of poverty. But since last year, my, my bishop, the Lord told me the next thing we are going to venture into is posterity. <laughs> we are entering a new era. Of what you and I do now, our children will meet it and say it happened in my father's time. Yeah. Can somebody raise hand and say, I will do that? I will. May 1985. Reverend Peace, hear me. God woke me up at 2 a.m. He said, From now, don't do what will die when you die, do what will at last you. And I called the whole body of our ministry and said, hospital will be built best in Africa. Schools will be built best in Africa. Today we have 94 schools with 43,000 students in Nigeria. Today, you are aware, you've been to this campus. We have the first Christian university in the continent of Africa. Posterity will have last prosperity. Each one of us must not only build a city and a tower, we must build what our children will meet. Because the Bible says, good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Somebody say big hallelujah. Who <laughs> among your friends 
said to you in the last one week, this bungalow we are occupying now is too small for us. Who among your friends challenge your yesterday's maximum to compare it to become today's minimum? Who? Who is your friend who said to you, the Lord bless you last year with 10 million naira. And I'm glad to tell you I made 100 million. Who is that your friend? And that's who you need. Manifesting as a son and a daughter of God. This group we are the first to say, if God can live in heaven, we can build a power to meet it. And God was not frightened by their power. I will soon tell you what God was not too happy about. Not about the tower, not about the city. But listen to verse 5, everybody. Verse 5. Read it with me loud, everybody. One, two, go. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of men build it. Stand to your feet, everyone. Please help somebody next to you to say, let's stand together. Carry your wife off, or if your baby is carrying you, carry the baby now. God came down. I'm not sure you are hearing me. Say with me, God came down. God came down. To act. To see. The city. And the power. With the sons of men. Have built it. What is that thing you have done that attracted God's attention? How many towers? How many cities? Bishop, mine, God left his throne, that's the Bible, and came down. Oh, that that day will come. That the grace of God will push you so far that God will say, that's my son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, that that day will come. And I say this to you all in Lagos, that your ambition will not be to make a living, hand to mouth. That your ambition will not be for two ends to meet. I was telling them in Benin on Friday, when I landed, I arrived in this country two days ago. I said, people who fight to make two ends meet can never meet. The end of my foot and my head, they don't meet. My front and my back, they don't meet. My ambition is not to make two ends meet, but to make my life meet the need of people. <laughs> for to be rich is to reach other people. A massive wealth for your personal consumption is poverty in disguise. Yeah. You didn't hear me. Yeah. Say with me to be rich. R I C H. Is to. R E A C H. People. people to be rich is to rich people all of you live in a town the most religious town we have in Africa where you can buy handkerchief you can buy holy oil you can buy towel you can buy broom you can you are looking for many 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 magicians that are playing your oracle in the name of miracle and it doesn't last to tie handkerchief in your car is not the will of God Faith does not come by handkerchief. Faith does not come by bottle of oil. Faith does not come by broom in the back of your car. And faith does not come by falling down and rising up. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I'm glad that you have preached the word here. Challenge, yet we stood the time. January 4th, next year, which is about five weeks away, will be 40 years I started preaching. I've never added anything to Christ and I need nothing outside Him. <laughs> Ask anybody who knows me 30 years ago. I've never sold broom to make a living. I've never sold oil to make a living. I've never sold handkerchief to make a living. I've never sold any sellable candle, camphor, red beret, green beret. Anything sellable, 
Nothing can be added to the grace of God. And what God cannot do, no man can improve on it. If you love the Lord, say big amen. Say with me one more time, God came down. To see the city and the tower with man built. What have you done to attract the presence of God? What has God used you to do? Remember the Bible said the land was plain. When you bought this land a few years ago, in your absence, Dr. Boye just brought me here. And he said, can you advise your friend about this place? I said, I will not talk to him until he finishes. <laughs> The swamp, the swamp, the swamp in this area can make any man beside if he cannot cross life. <laughs> the million you sank in the floor here to get a ground out of water could have caused the weakest man to say, where is God? And more than ten times I have come here without seeing you and I didn't look for you. I make sure you are not around. <laughs> When I'm coming, I put the first card in the spectacles so that your people don't know who I am. <laughs> we are here today because one man said it can be done. Yeah. Become a possibilitarian. Help yourself. Don't go to Presbyterian church, but become a possibilitarian. <laughs> Sit down and say amen. Yeah. Let me hear say, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. Let me hear say, nothing shall be impossible. Matthew 17, 20, nothing shall be possible to you. Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. All things are possible to him that believes. Luke chapter 9 is possible. Matthew 7 says, whatever we ask, we can receive. John 13 says, it's possible for us to have the kingdom of God. And these men and women built a city and a tower. And God was attracted. And God came down. Now I'm nearing my message. And I have five minutes to finish. Praise team, come here. Hurry up. God came down. Can I hear you say, God will come down for me? God will come down for me. I didn't hear you. God will come down for me. I said, I didn't hear you. God will come down for me. To see what I'm doing on earth that He gave to me. Hallelujah. Many of you are saying the reason God cannot use me is that I don't have ability. God is not looking for your ability, He's looking for your availability. And once you can avail yourself to Him, He will make Himself available. Get ready for my.
verse 6. The need of the hour. As members of the family of Trem enter the new faith in this ministry, God sent me this verse to give to you, Bishop Mike. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Say to your next person, We are going to be one. In language, in action, in ambition, in effort, we shall be one. God said. And this is the verse for you, Konkwa. Add it to your motto. In broken. Oh my bahaki la baya. For you and your wife, the limit is broken. For poverty, the limit is broken. For I don't know what to do, the limit is broken. From down cast, the limit is broken. From today, nothing shall be restrained from you. Somebody say big amen. Nothing. Say nothing. nothing. One more time. Nothing shall, shall be, restrained be restrained from me, from me that, I want to do. that I want to do. That is the gift God gave me. Yeah. To put your strength on today. Yeah. Bow your heads and join hands with somebody. Ephesians 2 20 says. Nothing you determine to do, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. How much you want to be determines of how much you want to be. No man can limit you from today. <laughs> this is the first breakthrough that man had. Children of men build tower 
I'm specific. And God said from now, nothing shall be restrained from them. Who they determine to do. And I'm glad I have the apostolic audacity and divine capacity to put in your life the power to do what you want to do. Is there anybody who wants to build a house? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for a wife? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for a husband? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for money in their bank account? It's possible. Is there anybody who wants to be richer than where they are now? It's possible. Somebody say hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Here I trim the ground of your power. I bow my knee. So thank you for Bishop Michael Kongo and Peace of Kongo and for the ministry you entrusted to their care. And now, Lord, according to your word to me to prophesy and say, nothing shall be restrained from them. And for every member present and absent today, the limit is broken in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I bow my knee to ask you, Holy Spirit, to visit your people with divine ambition. As I rise to my feet, I leave poverty behind. I leave sickness behind. I shoot everybody up in the name of Jesus. Declare you prosper in the name of Jesus. Be rich in the name of Jesus. Be well in the name of Jesus. Be alive in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lose your hand and raise it up and ask God for something tangible. Lose your hand and raise it up. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle of your own. Ask God. The things that are impossible with man is possible with God. It's 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 lift your hand and work it and praise God. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and ask God for something. 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 Your light is come.
Rachel said, the Lord has taken away my reproach. I stand here to say anything that will limit to you is removed. I stand here to say, if you have got three things today, it will give you four. If you ask him for one, he will give you two. He will be done, he will be done, he will be done, he will be done. Let me hear that it is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. Oh, do this with me. All my limits are removed. The Bible says, ye are the sons of God. And it's time for sons of God to manifest. 25 years ago, Bishop Mike, 1972, our total headquarter income was about 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 now. But 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 naira a month in our headquarter church. Everyone you saw dance just now, either in university, finish university, or on the way to university. This year we have 317 people on scholarship. 317. I was told it's not possible. The job you do is not as important as the God you know. Some of you say my job is very bad. It's not true. God is a good job. Psalm 106 verse 1. God is good. Some people say the reason I'm poor is because I live in the village. Transfer me to the most remote village under the sun. Up to Djibouti where they have 240 goats. And 200, 200, 240 human beings. And 420 goats. I will still build a tower and a city. I believe that you cannot do more than what your mouth confess. And I have come to ask you, mount up as you mount up. Use your mouth to change your situation. Something new is about to take place in trend. I left home, and Bishop Mike, I have to confess my sin to so his hand. This is one of the few hands one that is sung. Blessed. Of course, when they hear me, sir, this hand is blessed. And anything I touch, surely must be blessed. Amen. So I want 500 of you. That I don't say millionaire, it's a billionaire. <laughs> you better hear me. Only one thing I've not been able to do in 40 years. Point your hand and say, what is that? What is that? You are a coward. Ask me. What is that? Say it louder. What is that? Hold your hand there. Point it fiercely to me. Point it wickedly to me. Say, what is that? The only thing I have not been able to do in 40 years is what I don't want to do. Anything. Anything. Bishop Mike is aware. I told him, since 1972, I got three aircraft for the ministry. I dash it to people. But priority is different. They are those blessed to ride planes and blessed to build poor people's lives. That's why I'm in Benin. I love those of you in Lagos, but thank God for your traffic. I don't have it yet. <laughs> it took me two hours yesterday to enter my house. If I was in Lagos, I would have translated by now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com.
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God 
as he is talking to a faithful father. He saw God uh, like a son we see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school 
in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahoza University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain. But if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benidio, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting 
in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed. Uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle, with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street and every time he comes we call him pastor pastor he was young then about 21 or 22 
He was very, very young. But he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? What's up? What's up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. And he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and I said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sick raise the dead I said what I'm like waiting at God Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I die, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. 
So they tried the in a ordinary native doctor tried the can raise her back to life. Said, where is her now? He said she's swallowing there. Said he asked my father the question. Said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered my fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Another <laughs> looked back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came, 
I said, where is the child? You say the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I did not. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take 
the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got 
miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people. Said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998. now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa 
was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, the World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.